So we are just heading up now to get in the helicopter to fly up to the Berg Lake Trail, and that's usually something that you would hike in and do and camp for a couple days. But we're flying today because the trail's been closed for well over a year. It will likely be years before people can see the trail that makes Mount Robson a world-class hiking destination. It's been shut down since a flood in 2021 ripped out entire sections of the path. Park manager Elliot Ingalls knows this area and what happened better than anyone. So we are basically on the shores of, of Berg Lake. We're kind of standing in the middle of paradise, I guess. It's kind of one of the most beautiful places, I think, in the world. Well, now you get a full view of Mount Robson, the highest peak in the Rockies, nearly 13,000 feet high. The tumbling glacier takes form, and then a furry wing of crevasses tumbles into Berg Lake. It's like this. Well, you go across something like this, if the weather switched on you and you got a rainstorm, that'd be gone. That'd be it? gone. It sure could. Half a century later, that prediction came true. It's hard to believe anything could shake Mount Robson's sheer, overwhelming mass. But a few days of extreme heat and flood water from melting glaciers tore it apart. We're standing right in the creek. This creek blew out and took out a major piece of infrastructure. Like there's some old wood over there. Like that's not from this bridge. There's, there's just debris everywhere yeah, through here. Like when we were up here for those few days, it was about 37 degrees at this elevation which was just incredibly, incredibly hot for this area. And we were watching the glaciers. It looked like they were sweating. They were, you could see water, visibly seeing water, like pooling off of the glacier. They have a finite lifespan and we're watching them recede in front of us. And, and last year, especially the volume of water combined with the hot weather created this major event. And yeah, like, I mean, this area was underwater. This bridge was underwater. It was like nothing I've ever seen in, in my lifetime working in parks. The full scale of the damage didn't really become real until we traveled a few kilometers south into a valley near some of the trail's most recognizable waterfalls. It's the place Ingalls remembers some of the worst 48 hours of his career. How vivid are your memories of those days? I started up the trail at about 4.30 in the morning. And as soon as I got to the first bridge, I was just like, okay, this is it. 20 tons of rocks covering a bridge that had sat there for 20, 30 years. The river coming up 30, you know, 30 feet. This is unbelievable. This is nature, as much damage as you can see along this trail. This site, Whitehorn, is where we mobilized um, the helicopter and search and rescue, loading about 30 hikers into the helicopter and flying them down. Oh my God. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. When I got called on the radio that morning, we knew it was gonna be bad, but we didn't think it was gonna be that bad. Somehow, everyone made it off the mountain safely but the trail was in bad shape. If you had to you know, compare this area to the other parts of the trail that flooded, where did this rank in terms of severity of damage? So while the flooding was happening, this water would have been well over the top of where we are right now. And now you can see it's kind of dug a deep channel along the edge of where the trail used to be. To me, it's it's so unbelievable and it really speaks to the event and how, just how unbelievable nature can be. This year, crews started repairs with new bridges around Kinney Lake, the lower third of the trail. The work will progress to bigger projects like reinforcing riverbanks and elevating or rerouting trail sections that were wrecked. The work is complicated and time consuming to say the least, but it's critical. 
comfortable, a nice height. Excellent for having tons of stuff on. I could see families playing cards on there. That is a nice spot. BC Parks knows how vital this is to the community. It's the second oldest park in British Columbia. This trail has had an incredibly long history of people recreating here. And it's just a part of the history of the park. And people will look back on this in another hundred years and say, remember when that happened? Hopefully it's an eye opener for future generations to look at how we recreate and how we do conservation projects in, in parks. And it's important, it's a story to tell. Rihanna Schmunk, CBC News, Mount Robson.